Well, I got here today and I did some more work on my little custom digital voltmeter display. And I got it all wired up. As you can see, the epoxy is dried on both sides. And uh, you can see that side a little bit. It's all filled in. I just need to uh, touch it up with uh, some sanding and paint it all. But I got the display put in there. Wired it all up. I have my two wires routing down here. They're not uh, completed yet. And as you can see, I have my LG power supply here. And I just put my other two wires that are going to be reading the input and showing out on, on the display on the same spot where I'm going to be wiring it to my battery because that's what I want to find out. I want the voltage of that to display on the meter. So I'll give you a little display here. I'll put the camera down and hook it up for you real quick. All right, all I did was just stuck my Andersons from the battery straight to it for now, just to give you a test. And we come up here, and there you have it. 79.5 volts. Uh, battery pack's a little halfway dead. I've been riding it around town here and there. But I'm going to put a piece of uh, maybe tinted or clear Lexan over this and waterproof it in. So while I'm riding the bike, I know the voltage. I think it's going to work out pretty good so far. Good results. Okay, here's the finished product of the custom digital voltmeter. I still got some paint drying in a couple little spots, but and I got the fluorescent lights glaring on it, but you can see it right there. Paint job didn't come out as nice as I wanted it to on the PVC. It kind of there was some runs and I had a lot of touching up to do. So I wasn't really happy with the paint. I would have uh, rather liked it if I kept it gray the way it was. But it came out all right, and it's watertight. And I just stuck some uh, black sticky tape over it and uh, cut out the voltage of display so it looked a little cleaner from the front. Not bad, though cost me just a little under 20 bucks to do this. Well, I got my heat shrink in the mail and it is very big. It's uh, two meters long and stuff is very, very thick. Alright, as you know, I finally got my heat shrink in the mail, so I'm starting work on my second battery. I got all of my uh, terminals dremeled off and cleaned and I just put down my first little dabs of solder to get them all tinned and ready to go for the wiring. Okay, I have this half of the battery pack wired, and uh, I have to flip it over now and wire the other half, and then I can get the leads going. Everything's going well. I ran out of solder. I busted out a new little quarter pound, and uh, time to start going again. Pack flipped over, and I have all the cells arranged in their permanent configuration. Uh, I just Dremel tooled to clean all of the terminals on the tabs, and I just plop down all the solder and get it all tinned properly so that the 12-gauge copper sticks to it well. And uh, let's finish it up. Home stretch. Okay, I got the pack completed. Uh, now, because I have to keep this into two sections so I can heat shrink it properly, I uh, can't complete its 36 volt configuration just yet. So what I'm going to do is just uh, solder two leads on here temporarily, just so I could put the voltage into it and charge it. And after I get it charged, then I can finish up putting the rest of the leads on it. Okay, and there you have it. I got the battery jumped out with a piece of 10 gauge on this side where the packs are going to be split. And I have my 16 gauge charging leads coming down and over here. And I just popped the thing on charge. And these cells have been sitting for a couple of months. Just so they're almost about three cell, I mean three volts per cell, which is very low. So it's charging right now. You can see it's at 33 volts, so it's going to take a long time to charge. It's charging at uh, just under one, two amps, 1.94. So this thing's going to take about uh, 10 hours to charge, probably. Okay, the battery's been charging for about an hour, and uh, it's only at 37.69 volts, and let's see, it's put uh, 1.5 amp hours into the pack so far. Okay, it's at 38.62 volts, and still charging at 2 amps. And it's at 4.2 amp hours put into the batteries, 161 watt hours. All right, it's been charging a whole 45 more minutes since I got home, and it's still at only 40.8 volts and 10.41 amp hours put into the pack. 
Okay, so we've passed our capacity mark of 10.8 amp hours. It's at 41.48 volts, and it's at 10.8 amp hours right now, a little bit over. It's still charging. So let's see what it ends up pushing into them. I'm pretty curious to find out when it's going to stop. It should be very soon. The charger doesn't give it much more than another 0.1 volt, so it should be ending. This is a long, long charge.